Hi, Dr. Brian Heberlin here with Lexington ENT and Allergy. And if you've had a thyroid needle biopsy, uh, it's likely going to be reported in this uh, Bethesda classification system. And so there is a classification system that different pathologists got together and they determined um, what criteria you're looking for to try to say uh, in a uniform fashion of whether a thyroid sample is benign or malignant or whether there's enough cells or not. So that's this Bethesda classification system. And so there's a Bethesda 1 through 6. Uh, a Bethesda 1 really just means that the person getting the sample didn't get enough uh, cells to really be able to determine whether that's a uh, cancer or not. So uh, those are a non-diagnostic specimen. Often in people with thyroid cysts or when there's a lot of fluid within the, the thyroid nodule, when we call those a mixed nodule, um, it, when there's that situation, you get the fluid out and the fluid really doesn't contain much cells within it. And so you may get a non-diagnostic specimen. Now sometimes you'll get a non-diagnostic specimen in a solid nodule. And usually when that's uh, the case, you end up needing to do the biopsy again uh, in order to try to get more information. So. That's a Bethesda 1, a non-diagnostic specimen. A Bethesda 2, that's really what we're really hoping for. A Bethesda 2 looks to be benign, and usually that can, if they, they didn't see any bad cells, they got enough cells to look at and evaluate it well, so that's a Bethesda 2. And fortunately, uh, for most people, that's the, that's the answer you get when you get a, uh, a needle biopsy. It's a Bethesda 2, it's benign, it can be just observed and watched and uh, evaluated down the road. So. That's a Bethesda 2. And so then there are a Bethesda 3 uh, through 6 where you see a little bit of abnormality in a 3 and you see things that look pretty obviously cancerous on a Bethesda 6. And there's sort of a gradient between the two. A lot of people do get Bethesda 3 and 4 scores. And so that means they see a few cells that are abnormal. That doesn't certainly mean it's cancer, uh, but it ups the concern that it could be cancer in a Bethesda 3 and 4. Typically on a Bethesda 3 and 4, um, most institutions, and this is the way we do it, there'll be a molecular or a genetic test done on that sample. So when they do your needle biopsy, uh, most places will keep a little bit, and if there's a Bethesda 3 or 4 from the uh, examination the pathologists do just when they're looking under the microscope, that's the first step, uh, but if they see that slight abnormality but not obviously malignancies, they're gonna send that specimen off for a different type of molecular test. Uh, the brand name we use is one called Affirma, and they look for genetic alterations that happen as something is progressing from a normal sample, or from a normal thyroid to a malignancy. And so if you see some of those genetic abnormalities, that's gonna prompt us to be more aggressive about Bethesda 3s and 4s. Uh, most of the time, if it's a Bethesda 3 and 4 and there are no molecular uh, abnormalities to suggest a cancerous change, those can, can be treated like a likely benign and just observed with serial ultrasounds to make sure they're not growing or changing. If it's a Bethesda uh, 5 or a 6, then there's a high enough probability that's going to be cancer that the thyroid surgery is typically going to be your next step. So that's a, a broad overview of the Bethesda classification system and how it relates to surgical recommendations and recommendations for just observation or serial examinations with ultrasounds uh, from an ear, nose, and throat uh, thyroid surgeon perspective. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you.